Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, or good morning, depending on where you're watching this and what time you're watching it. Um, but today we're going to be talking about one of the airline industry's most dynamic, even though they've been around for some time, most dynamic companies. Uh, one of the first that got involved with uh, low cost carriers and made sense of that particular arena uh, as far as the traveling public was concerned. And I'm delighted all the way from Reykjavik, I have David Gunnarsson, who is the CEO of Dohop. Good afternoon, David. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Doing pretty well today. Thanks for having me. No problem. Good to be here. David, um, I'm familiar with, uh, as we mentioned earlier, I'm familiar with Dohop a little bit, but perhaps you can give me a, a potted history of where you've come from and, and where you're up to right now. Absolutely. Happy to do that. Um, so the company was founded in 2004 here in Iceland, and uh, initially as a flight meta search website. So uh, basically flight search uh, founded around the same time as kayak and, and sky scanner sky scanners a little bit earlier um, and really on the same premise but uh, our approach and well I'll say our even though I wasn't there at the beginning I, I joined the company in 2009 our approach was always about uh, connecting the unconnected so connecting LCCs low-cost carriers both amongst themselves and connecting them um, with full service carriers so basically helping our initial customers, our initial uh, users to find a, and, and connect any possible flights between any two possible destinations. So as we all know, I mean, the, the aviation world is structured in such a way that, that you know, certain carriers on, uh, only work with certain other carriers, thus building the routes that are possible. But we said, no, we don't want to, do, we don't want to focus only on that. We want to, we want to create all possible routes. And, and that's what we initially always referred to as self-connect. So that is the sort of the uh, inception of that. Okay. And in the early days, presumably, did you, were you able to have, if you like, free access to uh, an un unrestricted access to low cost carrier scheduling? How did you pick that up? Because I know some, some tend to be a little bit protective of what they put out on the open web, so to speak. Some do, but we, so we've always, from the beginning, we've, we, we've actually bought uh, schedules. We've acquired schedules from OAG. Well, what used to be also called Innovata. Innovata was, was originally, I think that's part of Serium now. And, um, and then OAG is our provider, is our scheduling provider. So we, so we've always uh, acquired all of the schedules and that's really how the technology works is we, we acquire all of the schedules. We supplement them with the schedules, files, more frequent updates from airlines directly, if possible, if they're if they're open to that. But then, and then with those schedules, we build all possible uh, itineraries, all possible journeys between any two airports in direct flights, one stop, two stops, and and we then in real time when the customer does a search on the website on any website that we power today, and and I have to explain a little bit more what you do today because I'm only halfway there. Um, in, in real time, we then do, do price fair lookups and, and so shopping and availability basically to, to return a price and availability to the customer. So that's different from, say, me going onto the BA website. They're only going to give me BA or any of their code share. Uh, what you're actually doing is, is saying you're putting in effect what are the, these mathematical tables, which are schedules, put them into a big mixer. And when I press the button, it goes into that mixer and makes some sense of it and links those disparate uh, schedules together. Exactly, exactly. So it gives you a full full view of the world, uh, of, of, of the sort of available journeys in, in the world. So connecting any two airlines, irrespective of whether or not they have agreements or things. And that was always, you know, that was the, uh, that was a blocker also in the beginning. So, so in, you know, first 10 years of the company's history up until it's like 2020, 20, about 20, 2014, we were always able to display these, these journeys, but not book them in a, a sort of single checkout process for the customer, which makes it difficult. So that's two, two pain points there. One is that you cannot book them in a single booking or could not, but, and, uh, and you, you could also not travel without the risk of missing a flight and being exposed to that risk at the connecting airport. Now, uh, our very good friends at Kiwi, they came along, they, they, they weren't called Kiwi back then, but they came along and they allowed people to find these similar uh, itineraries and book them in a single, well, in a single checkout process with, with uh, essentially with alongside a guarantee that allowed people to, 
uh, easily book and uh, easily travel. And if they missed a connection, then Kiwi would sort of uh, reaccommodate them. Now, our approach to that was really that we thought it would make more sense to work directly with airlines to provide that, to provide that capability to airlines, to allow airlines to make uh, essentially available for sale on their website uh, any combination of an airline that they wanted to work with, whether they were a non-Ianta or Nyanta carrier, you know, ticketing, ticketless, uh, LCC to full service, hybrid, you name it. So that's kind of what we have been working on since 2014. We've been working on enabling that. Initially, we started working with airports in that respect. Um, we, we, we did a product, we, we worked on a product called Gava Connects that was launched in 2015. And then in 2017, we started working with EasyJet, uh, providing the technology behind Worldwide by EasyJet, which allows EasyJet not only to sell online connections within their own network, but also to sell connections to any number of their, uh, I think it's about, I think we're up to 17 partner airlines now in Worldwide. Um, and to really enable them to do uh, exactly that, to sell connections to anyone they want to work with or anyone who wants to work with them. So if I live, if I live in, say, Inverness, which doesn't have transatlantic service, I want to book an EasyJet flight from Inverness to New York, I can do that through the EasyJet website? Exactly. You can do that through the EasyJet website. Of course, not many people, even though it's been around for about four years, not many people know that that's possible, which is why we also facilitate, you know, the distribution of those journeys to Google Flights and Skyscanner, etc. But, but yes, you end up from all of those partners, you end up still end up on the EasyJet website to make that booking, and that's facilitated by us. Now, granted, when when Norwegian uh, long haul existed pre COVID. It was much easier to get from Inverness to New York via via EasyJet than a partner, but um, but it's still it's uh, several transatlantic partners, Middle East partners, you know, far far Asia, kind of Singapore, Hong Kong, etc. So, um, and yes, that's really what we power for EasyJet. So the availability of this service and the the public knowledge, if you like, of that service, is really down to EasyJet's either good or poor marketing, because I'm not sure everybody knows that, um, depending on one's point of view. Yes, I, that's, that's the sort of, you know, from a, let's say from a consumer kind of uh, choice or availability, as you say, that's down to EasyJet. But of course, also people, I mean, people tend to use the, the major kind of search websites, the OTAs, etc. And, and we can make it available on some of the search sites. Um, this is also something that I know many OTAs who work with EasyJet for their direct flights want to make available as well. Um, so this is something that, that and, and that's something we are working on. And of course, not only with EasyJet, but with many other airlines that we work with. Right. So that if we take today, as in 2021, you're powering a number of uh, airline websites or airport websites as well, uh, with this ability to go from A to B via Z. Uh, via two different airlines now you power their their search under their branding etc do you do that in any other you know i mean is that your gig as opposed to your own branded website your gig really is to provide the technology for other people with bigger more consumer well-known brands to actually access uh, the marketplace yeah, that's that's our gig, uh, and we we used to have. I mean, our life started as a company with our own branded website. It's still there. <clears throat> Pardon me. It's very minor. It's it's mainly geared towards Iceland because we're you know we're a company is founded and and, and based in Iceland. About uh, about uh, uh, half of our our staff globally is is still in Iceland, and uh, and that's that's something. But that's purely meta search. That's not down to selling these kinds of connections. So. Uh, that's that's the meta search redirect models or redirecting you know comparing prices and redirecting to the site where people can book. But for our our bread and butter today is helping airlines sell uh, these connections and then also of course servicing them because we do that as well. We provide the additional service um, that the these connecting customers of these airlines need. And the, and the simple reason is that an airline like EasyJet only operates point to point. They, they, they like to, you know, they're, they're, they're very keen on maintaining the integrity of that model. So we bolt on, not only do we bolt on the 
the availability or the, the sale of those connections, but also the servicing, because those procedures aren't inherently in-house for, for EasyJet. So um, let's get up to, again, get up to date. 2021, we've just been through and we are still in uh, the worst pandemic since for over 100 years. Um, on the face of it, you would think if you're in the airline business, which in effect you are, that's not good times. But if you think about technology, many of the airlines, whilst they may have furloughed staff, they may have mothballed aircraft, a lot of them would be preparing for if you forgive the terminology, lift off when we can. A lot of the world is already taking off. Again, yep. forgive, the, forgive the pun. Um, and they would want to offer a better service and a broader service. Has, has the pandemic period been fallow for you or one of rich reward? Well, um, first of all, I do enjoy a good pun. So, uh, um, and, but, but the, the pandemic period, of course, I mean, especially last year, it was horrible as everyone in aviation. I mean, our revenue, the bulk of our revenue comes from, from bookings because of the way that we work with airlines. So we partner with an airline like EasyJet. We tend to charge them very little or zero upfront. We may charge them a small amount every month, but our main main source of revenue is the kind of per, per booking. So the, an airline success is our success. That means that while you know, January 2020 was by far our best month ever. And we were heading into a year of triple digit growth. Uh, in, in April, we had zero revenue. So um, that was a that was a pretty significant steep drop. And everybody else, you know, it, probably in the most of the known world experienced the same. Um, <clears throat> we were very fortunate to be in that sense based in Iceland because the Icelandic government stood by uh, Icelandic companies that were very hard hit. So that was that was good. We also had some support. We have a company, uh, obviously, in the UK as well. So we had we had good support from the UK government as well, and and we were able to to survive. And uh, well, the culmination of that survival was was with an investment that we took from a company called SCP, an investment firm in the UK, uh, and and that was in in at the end of November last year. And and I think maybe the the backstory to that is that that had, that that discussion had started. Be, pre-COVID, but what happened during COVID, I think, allowed us to conclude the investment talks in the middle of, as you say, the worst pandemic in 100 years, uh, because of the interest that we saw from airlines. So we saw, we, we, you know, as soon as COVID hit, airlines that we had been talking to, those talks were accelerated. And then new ones came on board and they said, okay, well, you know, we have, airlines have code share and interline in place and they you know many code share and interline agreements are underperforming so they think can we switch those over to this more lightweight way this legacy free way of of uh, of of partnering with another airline and then airlines are thinking about you know point to point airlines think about how can they extend of what they mm. sell and service by selling connections within their own network or to partners can they give you know long haul carriers access to their good short haul European network uh, and, and, and on and on. So that's really, it's been a boon uh, in many ways because it's, it has enabled us to do this. But of course we are still like, like you know, many, many airlines are, are severely struggling and we are struggling as well, but we are managing to get through it because we have the investment and because we have a lot of interest from airlines. Okay, let's, let's take a positive view that we will be flying sooner rather than later and in big numbers uh, yep. everybody always talks about pent-up demand and yada 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 but the fact of the matter is that when the air, when the airways do open up then uh, you'll start to earn your segment fees etc and life will be shangri-la um looking forward let's assume that happens where does the development of dohop go do you are you going to do be deploying things like AI? Will it be voice recognition, all those types of things? Or even further so that people would recognize your voice and they immediately know where you are. They know what preference, seat preferences, all sorts of stuff that might make the software even more client friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, uh, so, well, first of all, we take top down kind of, and, and going back to the consumer choice question uh, or the consumer choice concept earlier, is we will, we always want to offer and surface as many as many possible journeys as we can, and and we do that 
today through our airline partners. So, so, uh, and that's fantastic. And we've continued signing them up throughout COVID. We have many, many to launch and, and many more in the near terms of pipeline. Now, one of, one of the things that we are working on aside from air to air connections is air to rail. And air to rail uh, is becoming increasingly um, interesting to us and to airlines all over the world. Uh, where that where that's applicable in in, in sort of uh, for example in Europe it can be immensely uh, beneficial to to land somewhere in a big airport and be able to book in a in a single uh, checkout to book an entire journey like that so that's one one significant thing we're working on from a sort of uh, customer experience perspective um, we're we're doing plenty of work with airports we're thinking about you know how do you how do you make sure that the uh, customer the transit experience at a connecting airport is as efficient and pleasurable as as, as possible uh, we're thinking about from the customer service perspective you know fully automated self-service of of any kind of disruption if you miss a flight you just get a new ticket uh, to your inbox or, or by text etc so there's a lot of there's a lot of initiatives that we're working on the core of the business is going to remain you know connecting journeys but it's it's certainly going to expand to rail you know possibly bus uh, and and other things that that really make it just grow the market really and grow the choice for for people everywhere in, in, you know to to go to their favorite airline website to be able to book you know their the journey that they need and then have the you know let's say efficient uh, service being provided every step of the way. Marvelous. Well, David, thank you very much for your time. I know you're busy uh, implementing all these new airline systems. It sounds very positive, even though cash might be tight at the moment. It does sound very positive. And for the rest of 21 and 22, I wish you the very, very best of luck in the deployment of all this software. It sounds very exciting. Thank you very much. Thanks.